Carrying around heavy gear sucks. I always tend to lean towards bringing the smallest and lightest amount of gear possible, especially when I'm just trying to go out for a casual shoot, which has always meant that I'm leaving my gimbal at home. I've always wanted a more lightweight and compact solution to stabilizing my footage without breaking my back in the process. Enter the Zhiyun Crane M2S. This is the smallest and most lightweight gimbal I've ever gotten my hands on. And even though it's got that compact form factor, it can still fly both of my cameras being the A7C and the A6400. Now I don't have to decide between bringing along my gimbal and breaking my back. And I can easily and conveniently always have that extra stabilization in my bag at all times, which is going to completely change the way that I approach my run and gun style and is going to make me even more excited to go out and shoot every time I get the opportunity. All right, so today we're talking about one of the most exciting pieces of filmmaking gear that I've gotten my hands on in quite a long time. So this is the Crane MS2. It's a very small, almost like smartphone sized gimbal that can fly cameras up to the size of like the A7S 3 So I've currently got the A7C on here and we're gonna run around and grab some shots and then ultimately I'm gonna bring it back into the studio so that we can get some more interesting and in-depth reviews on the actual performance of this. But as you can see, it handles this payload just fine and this is really cool because it opens up the ability to carry around very little gear and still be able to just carry around a gimbal with significant convenience so let's go test it out and see how well it works So if you thought those b-roll sequences were fire, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. I'm building out my video production business and documenting the entire process along the way. So if you want to follow me along for that journey, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the future videos. So you guys heard me say it right in the beginning of the video. I was really excited to be able to have my hands on this and test this out because some of the other reviews that I've seen on YouTube talking about this particular piece of gear has been incredibly impressive just from a viewer's perspective. So getting my hands on it was really something I was happy about. So in that initial opening B-roll sequence, you guys heard me talk about how carrying around a whole bunch of gear for long days, just trying to like go out and have some fun and shoot has always been something that's bothered me. I don't want to carry around a giant gimbal and a tripod and all these other pieces of gear just to go out and shoot and have some fun. I'm all about kind of that run and gun style and want to keep my gear pretty light but I haven't been able to find a gimbal up until this point that allows me to just kind of throw it in the bag and it's not too big of a nuisance to carry it around. Now, that is until the Crane M2S. And just for full disclosure, Jayun did send this one out to me. They don't get to review this before I put it out or anything like that, and they don't get to influence what I say, so this is my honest opinion, but they did send it to me for me to review. So I want to take you guys through some of those shots and I'll kind of walk you through the overall movements that I was doing in order to capture some of these shots and we'll kind of look at them together. So we started with using our A7C with the 35mm f1.8 on there which is a pretty small lens and the A7C body is pretty compact but the Crane M2S handled this absolutely no problem. There's plenty of room to go back and forth to add a heavier body or a heavier lens so this was overall just kind of our first test and we're able to run around with something that had a little bit of a tighter focal length to see how well it had some stabilization. In addition to the 35 f1.8, we were also using the 20mm f1.8 G, which is a little bit heavier lens. Plus, on the end of that 20mm, we were using some step-up rings to a black Promis filter to a variable ND filter. That's a pretty thick variable ND filter, and I'll throw a picture of what that setup looked like. And this thing handled it absolutely no problem. So you could get some even heavier lenses, possibly some of the lighter zoom lenses onto this gimbal as well and not have any issues. But I would recommend utilizing primes on it for the most part, because if you really start to get front heavy, you're gonna have trouble balancing this gimbal and it might not be able to handle the payload. 
but with prime lenses like the ones that I'm using, you can absolutely get them on there and you can utilize this to get some really, really great shots with even longer focal lengths as long as the lens stays fairly small. So as we went through, I wanted to really test how well you could stabilize these, these longer types of movements because sure, gimbals can help for very short parallaxes when you're already shooting in 60 frames a second or something like that and you've got a wider lens. But I wanted to see if we could get some really interesting parallax effects and you know following effects using a, a tighter lens like a 35 without really having to do that you know gimbal ninja walk that we've all seen and done ourselves so i really wasn't trying to you know go super smooth i did obviously smooth it out a little bit but overall we can take a look at one of these follow shots when i was just following amy you know walking fairly normally and this thing without any post stabilization is holding up really really well so the power of these particular motors in these axes are really really powerful for such a small little gimbal so as we run through a few more of these shots you can see like without any post stabilization this is really really stable and usable footage right out of the gate and then if you add just a little bit of extra stabilization in post these are buttery smooth clips so i was really impressed just looking at this through the lcd screen and then getting it on the computer i was even more impressed because this footage is all directly usable straight out of camera which is something that you can't say for handheld footage sometimes and obviously some other gimbals might not be quite as smooth as this so we tested it with a lot of these different shots and as you're seeing all of these types of shots where we're trying to do these longer movements are really really stable and are really usable now i played around a little bit with the joystick as well and i'll show you one of those shots right now and the joystick is fairly smooth it's a little bit small and a little bit sensitive so you have to be careful when you're using it and it might take a few tries but you can still get some really interesting movements combining your ability to move the camera utilizing the joystick and move your body moving in towards subjects like when i did it with this palm tree i was able to kind of walk towards the palm tree and tilt up the gimbal at the same time using the joystick and you can get some really cool and interesting shots that are really stable and very cinematic. Now those results alone were impressive, but I really wanted to try and put this to the test. So what I did is I had Amy go into a very, you know, light jog. We're not talking a full sprint, but I really wanted to see how well this thing could hold up in terms of a long sustained period of time of some pretty significant and heavy stabilization. So I had her go into a light jog and I was kind of following behind her with a light jog and this result is mind blowing. So this is without any post stabilization at all. This is just straight out of the camera. And this is nearly rock solid in terms of stabilization. I could not believe this when I was looking at it in the LCD screen. I was in a light jog, not really trying to brace it or anything like that. Just following Amy as she was doing a light jog for, you know, maybe 15, 30 seconds. And the entire clip is completely usable, which I think is unbelievable because I wasn't bracing. I wasn't doing anything out of the ordinary. I was fully in a light jog, just making sure that I was tracking along with her and it stabilized all of it without an issue. So now that you guys have seen that test footage, drop a comment down below and let me know what you guys think. Is this something that you want to add to your kit? I'm personally really happy to have it in mind and it's going to completely change my workflow to allow me to bring a gimbal on any run and gun shoot just strictly out of the convenience of this thing. It is really small, it's really powerful, and it can handle the two cameras that I have with the a6400 and the a7c. Now the two lenses that I mentioned that I was using on there are prime lenses so they're a little bit lighter than some of the zoom so I'd be careful if you do have really heavy zoom lenses like any of the G Masters or some of the thicker G's like the 24 to 105 f4 anything that's kind of a heavier zoom lens you might have a little bit of trouble with this but you can check on Jiayun's website to see some compatible lens and camera combos and i even saw on sean kitching's review of this particular gimbal that he was able to use a tamron 17 to 28 on this gimbal and had no problems at all with that being able to balance so with my particular setup using the 20 millimeter f1.8 and the 35 f1.8 i will absolutely be carrying around this gimbal in my kit at all times because it's so light so compact and so small that it just makes sense to have that extra stabilization if i run into areas where i need it and want to use it so thank you again for jayun for sending this gimbal out and if you guys are interested in picking one up there's a link down in the description below to check it all out on amazon so if you want to support the channel and support me for more of these videos, go ahead and hit that link down below and get one for yourself. Couldn't recommend it more. Peace.